welcome to HTBB Online. We're so glad that you've joined us. Wherever you are in the world, let's interact together. You can post comments. And if you want to speak directly with one of our pastors online, you can message them and they will respond. They are here to pray for you. So let's start today by praying together before we worship. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are sovereign. Lord, we thank you that you are in control. Lord, we just lift up our family, our friends, our communities, our cities, our nations, this whole world, Lord. We place it into your hands and we say, Lord, would you step in? Would you intervene? And Lord, right now we ask, would you give us hearts of faith? Would you help us, Lord, to fix our eyes on you as we worship? Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Raise our faith and our hope and our joy and give us that peace that surpasses all understanding. We ask this now in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's worship. Our Father high above, hello it be. Reveal to us again who you are All things are possible God of the miracle Oh, let your will be done We pray for heaven here today Your kingdom to reign Give us everything Help us to love as you have loved us Now come and build your throne As we go where you go God, how deliver us We pray for heaven here today
worship you now Your love is perfect Your heart is kind I'm yours forever Forever you're mine Jesus the end
Jesus, the anthem of my heart. Jesus, the anchor of my soul. I'm overwhelmed by all you are. Oh, how I love you. You were the word at the beginning. Born with God the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation. Now revealed it, you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us So Jesus, you brought heaven down oh. My sin was great, your love was greater What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is What a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a wonderful name it is nothing compares to this what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, how powerful, how powerful you are. Oh, 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 Jesus, there's power in the name of Jesus. Oh, death could not hold you. Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, you silenced the most of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are What a powerful name it is, the name of you have no rival, you have no rival, you have no equal, now and forever God you reign, yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory. Yours is the name 
What a powerful name it is And nothing can stand against What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus Lord, we thank you that you're not just great, but you are good. We thank you that in this season of uncertainty, you stand above the fray and you have authority over all sickness and risk. But Lord, we also thank you that you are Emmanuel, God with us. And wherever we are at, separated physically, we thank you that we can come together and worship you as one. So we worship you. Come, Holy Spirit. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Once again, a really warm welcome to HTBB. Wherever you are joining us from, it's so good to have you with us. Let us know in the chat box below where you're tuning in from. We'd love to know. We are Abel and Jacinta and we're service pastors here at HTBB. So good to have you with us, whether you're viewing this on your own or whether you're with friends and family, welcome to HTBB. Well, right now we're going to be taking this time to give. And you know, very often in the kingdom of God, the Lord invites us to move in the opposite spirit of the currents of the world. And in a time that is uncertain, where people might be tempted to hoard, we're called to give it away and to prefer others over ourselves. And so click on the giving link and it will bring you to the giving page. And as we take the next couple of minutes to give online, we're going to watch this week's edition of HTVB News. Let's take a look. If you're keen on praying for the life of our church and local community, then HTBB Prayer Force is for you. Join this team to receive weekly key prayer items for HTBB Alpha and other events. We also meet up monthly on a Sunday afternoon for a time of worship and prayer. Come along to the next gathering on 5th April after the 11.30 a.m. service. Easter is the most important time of the year as we journey to the cross of Good Friday once again. So on Friday the 10th of April, we have creative, amazing Good Friday services lined up for you at 8 p.m. in English and also 8 p.m. in Mandarin and then again at 9.30 p.m. in English. Please be thinking, who can you bring along to hear about the most radical, important event in the whole of history? And then on Easter Sunday, the 12th of April, we have a full set of services when we celebrate together that He is risen, Jesus is alive, new creation has begun. Come and let's celebrate together. Here are some other events happening this month. For more information, check out htbb.org or follow us on our social media platforms. Today, I want to talk about choosing faith over fear. At these unique and challenging times, it can be so easy to be fearful, can't it? But it's not inevitable. We're not passive beings. You are made in the image of God. Jesus even said to the wind and the waves, be still, and they were calm. And likewise, you can say to the wind and the waves of your emotions and fears, be still in the name of Jesus, and they will be. You have the power to choose faith over fear. And King David in Psalm 34, verse 4, says this, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me 
from all my fears. Seek the Lord, and the promise is he will deliver you from all your fears. And the very fact that you're watching this online now means that you are already seeking the Lord. And we can continue to do that uh, every Sunday, but also midweek. You can join a, a connect group online or even Alpha on Wednesday nights online. And to seek him requires humility, an attitude that says, God, I can't do this on my own. I need you. In 1 Peter 5 verse 6, it says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up. But how do we seek God? How do we choose faith over fear? Well, I, I want to suggest just five simple things we can do. Number one, pray. What if the most important thing that you do is not to complete a task but to whisper a prayer. I'm a bit of a doer, and if you're anything like me, you might find it hard to sit still. But the problem with this is that when a crisis hits, prayer is often our last resort, when it could be our first response. So turn your worries into prayers. And you can pray at any time. We're told at the moment, we're encouraged to wash our hands. And the advice is to wash your hands for 20 seconds. That's quite a lot of time. And if you're washing your hands, I don't know, let's say 10 times a day, that's over three minutes of hand washing. Why not decide whenever you wash your hands, I'm going to pray. You can pray anything. Actually, in 20 seconds, you can even pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven hallowed be your name, and so on. Just say anything to God. Talk to him. And you don't have to be good at praying to do this. I came to faith in Jesus during my late teen years. And the way it happened was uh, I got hold of a New Testament and I decided to start reading it. So every night when I got got into bed, I'd read uh, some of the New Testament, a few verses, and then I'd close the Bible, I'd, I'd turn my light out, And I'd start to pray. I'd say, God, I don't know if you're there, but if you are, I I read this and I'm thinking this and I'd fall asleep. And I did that every night for a year. And at one point in that year, I suddenly thought, wow, Jesus is who he says he is. He's the son of God. You see, the point is this. Probably the most important prayers I've ever prayed in my life, I consistently fell asleep in the middle of. You don't have to be a professional. You don't have to be good at prayer for this to work, for God to hear and for him to answer. And if you want help with praying, you can submit your prayer requests right now online, just privately, directly, uh, chat with one of our online pastors and they will pray for you. Or midweek, go to our website, htbb.org, on the homepage, submit your prayer request. And prayer is important for three reasons. Firstly, it will grow your relationship with God as you talk to him in prayer. You'll know from any relationship, it only grows if there's good communication. One of the surprisingly good things to come out of this situation right now could well be your relationship with God grows as you have the time to pray. The second reason why prayer is important is because it changes things. It changes things. 2 Chronicles 7.14, God says this, if my people who are called by my name, and that includes you, will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Wow. Just think, the course of your nation will be determined by your prayers, by all of our prayers. Amazing. 
So prayer is not just your greatest need, it's also your greatest opportunity to make a difference, and we can do it together. In the book of James, it says, the prayers of a, of a righteous person are powerful and effective. The prayers of a righteous person are powerful and effective. Now, you might say, yeah, but hold on a minute. Why would God listen to me? I'm not righteous. In a sense, that's true. For all have fallen short of the glory of God and sinned. But the minute that you and I, we turn to Jesus in faith and choose to follow him, St. Paul says, that means that you, I, we're now in Christ. That means right now, God the Father looks at you wherever you are and he says, you're righteous because of my son, Jesus. He's died for you. That means you are righteous. And that means that when you pray in the name of Jesus, you can be completely confident that God hears and he will answer. So, Pray, it grows your relationship with God, it changes things, and thirdly, it will bring you peace, real peace. Philippians chapter four, verses six and seven says this, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. As we pray, and as we thank God, let's not forget to be thankful. The promise of prayer, the consequence of prayer, is peace, irrespective of your circumstance. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, lives in you. So we pray. The second thing we can do to choose faith over fear is to read the Bible. We talk to God in prayer, but we hear from God primarily through his word, the Bible. In Matthew chapter four, Jesus is in the wilderness and uh, he's not been eating, so he's really hungry. And I know at this time, with all the panic buying, lots of people were scared of going hungry. And Jesus is tempted, and he responds by quoting from Deuteronomy chapter 8. He says, Man does not live on bread alone, but from every word that comes from the mouth of God. You've probably had the experience, the terrifying experience of going to a supermarket recently. I was just in a supermarket uh, the other day and it was chaos, absolute chaos, panic buying left, right and centre. And I'd got some essentials in a basket and uh, the queue from the till went all the way down the aisles and I was right at the back of this queue. And as we were slowly moving down this aisle, people had plenty of time just to start to buy random things that they would never normally buy off and take them, take them off the shelves and put them in the basket, whether it was, you know, cuddly toys, shower caps. The person in front of me was getting loads of cardamom pods into their basket. And uh, I just looked at all these baskets filled with stuff lined up down this aisle. And I thought, do you know what? Everybody also needs a Bible in their basket. Because man does not live by bread or rice or cardamom pods alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. That is food for the soul. But then I thought, actually, we don't need a Bible in our basket because we can have a Bible in our phone. And I'd really encourage you, if you don't have one already, just download a Bible app. version is brilliant. And within their Bible reading plans, you'll find the Bible in one year, B-I-O-Y. Or or you can just download the Bible in one year app directly onto your phone. And every day, it's brilliant. Nikki and Pippa Gumbel take us through the Bible in one year, and they have an amazing commentary and devotion to pray. 
And we can do it together as a worldwide community and feed on the good stuff. You know, when you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing you're going to consume? Breakfast or the word of God? Feed your soul, not just your body. And every day, I know that if you do this, God will speak to you and comfort you. Read the Bible. The third thing we can do, pray, read the Bible. Third thing is worship the Lord. Psalm 42, verse 5, says this. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Dan and I spoke last week on hope, but we can also, this psalm tells us, praise the Lord, our Savior and our God. And one way to do this is through sung worship, through worship music. And why does worship help combat fear? Well, as we worship, it fixes our eyes of faith upon the Lord. It's like a telescope as we worship, where we can look upon Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And as we look upon the Lord in worship, we're reminded of how infinitely huge he is. And then by comparison, the challenges that we face begin to shrink and look smaller. So worship is like a telescope, but also worship helps us begin to see things from a different perspective, from the perspective of heaven, from the perspective of eternity. It lifts us above the temporal. In that sense, as we worship, it's like getting into a helicopter. And we rise above the daily struggle. We see from a different perspective of eternity. And faith, if you think about it, is when our belief goes beyond that which we can see. And as Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we live by faith and not by sight. Worship gives us eyes of faith. So at these times, uh, I really encourage you, play worship music in your home, on your devices. Actually, you can play the HTBB worship playlist uh, on Spotify. And as you do, you'll find that the worship will not only change the spiritual condition of your home or your car or, or wherever you are, it'll also change the spiritual condition of your heart. Faith will rise. Fear will diminish. So we can pray, we can read the Bible, we can worship. The fourth thing we can do to choose faith over fear is to care for others. We combat fear by taking our focus off ourselves and onto God, but also by taking our focus off ourselves and onto caring for others. In Romans chapter 12, verse 21, Paul says this, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. We don't have to be uh, passive or defensive at these times. We can go on the offensive with good, with love, with caring for others. And at times, caring for others might mean being wise and self-distancing, social distancing. But at other times, it might mean reaching out practically to help others. And if you need practical help, please do let us know. Or it might mean, well, usually it can also mean praying for people. And it comes through staying connected Again, sometimes I might be physically, but definitely digitally, virtually. It's the power of love in community that provides care. So I really encourage you to get into a connect group. 
It's never been easier. It's online. And stay connected, even if just virtually. Love through community. And that might mean just encouraging one another. Proverbs 12, verse 25 says this. Anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. It might just be a kind word that you send in a WhatsApp or a text to somebody. And that kind word can completely change their day or their week. Sometimes it might even change their life. Kindness is, I think, one of the most underrated of all the fruit of the Spirit. It's so powerful. So pray right now. Ask the Lord, who might he want you just to send a kind WhatsApp or message to? So we fight fear with faith through prayer, through reading the Bible, through worship, through caring for others. And finally, you can receive the love of God. John tells us in 1 John 4 verse 18 that perfect love drives out fear. And then in verse 10, he tells us what love is. John writes this. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. You can know your value to God, that you are loved. And let that truth calm your fears and reassure you. And if you want proof that God actually loves you, then you need look no further than the cross. And at this time of Lent, that's really what we're meditating upon, the cross of Jesus, that God so loved the world, you and me, that he sent his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us, that we can know forgiveness and have eternal life. New life begins through the resurrection. And, you know, sometimes, uh, particularly stressful times, I, I, I carry this little wooden cross with me. And if I'm really stressed, um, I'll be honest with you now, what, what I do is when I get into bed at night, I put my fingers around the cross like this, and I sleep holding this cross as a sort of physical reminder that I don't need to worry. God loves me. He loves you. This cross, the cross of Christ, tells you that you do not need to fear. Death is not the end. It has been defeated and resurrection awaits. And love is the antidote to fear. Love is the antidote to fear. And love is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And as Romans 5 verse 5 tells us, God pours his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. So, shall we ask God to fill us once again with his tangible love by his Holy Spirit? Would you like to stand, please, if you can, wherever you are? And we're going to pray. We're going to pray that simple prayer and ask the Spirit to come to pour his perfect love into our hearts and to drive out all fear. So let's pray. Just echo this prayer in your heart right now. Come, Holy Spirit, would you fill us again with your presence and your love?
Jesus promises us that if we ask, we will receive. He's not going to give us something awful. He says, how much more will my Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Lord, I pray for every person, wherever they are right now, that your perfect love would drive out all fear. I think there's someone watching right now and you've been struggling with really bad eczema and it's sort of flared up more than ever. I don't know whether it's connected to worry or whatever, but right now let's pray for you. In the name of Jesus, we command the eczema to go and the skin to be healed and the irritation to be gone. In Jesus' name. I think there's someone also you've been suffering from kind of bad uh, indigestion and sort of acid reflux. Right now, Lord, I pray you will soothe the body and bring healing in the name of Jesus to whoever that is right now. Come, Holy Spirit. I think there's someone as well, and, and you're really anxious and worried because you have a family member who is stuck somewhere, and you're worried they're not going to be able to get back home. You might even be struggling to contact them right now. So, Lord, I just pray for that situation that you would enable them to come home safely and swiftly. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that faith and hope can rise up right now and fear diminish. If you would like prayer for anything specifically, just uh, contact one of our online pastors right now. It's completely confidential. They can pray for you right now. So let's continue to receive from the Holy Spirit. Continue to pray as we go and uh, into a time of worship once more. Let's pray and worship together now. Amen. You 
Thank you, Lord, that you are in control, that we can choose faith over fear because of your promise, Jesus, that you are with us always, even until the very end of the age by your Spirit. 
And so we pray the words of the blessing right now. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us. We're so glad you were able to be with us today. And do keep in touch online. We will be running Alpha, Connect Groups online. Um, Again, follow us on social media just so you can keep up to speed. We are keeping you in our thoughts and in our prayers. Have a great week. See you next Sunday. in